Oklahoma Gardening is a production of the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service as part of the land-grant mission of the Division of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources at Oklahoma State University, dedicated to improving the quality of life of the citizens of Oklahoma through research-based information. Southwood Landscape and Garden Center, Tulsa's source for great gardens, southwoodgardencenter.com and the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping to keep Oklahoma green and growing. Today on Oklahoma Gardening, host Casey Hinch's harvest peas and carrots that were planted in our hay bale cold frame. Barbara Brown has tips for shopping at a farmer's market. We travel to Enid to visit their farmer's market, and we grab a bite at a locally sourced eatery in Edmond. this season we planted a couple of cool season crops we planted carrots and peas now both of these we planted in our makeshift straw bell cold frame we as the temperatures warmed up we took off the windows allowing the um, elements to get to our plants so they could continue growing beyond the height of what the straw bells were so we've got carrots growing. The only really maintenance that we had to do to our plants in addition to watering was to thin out our carrots and then we did trellis our peas, although they were shorter peas, so we didn't even need to do that. We did thin our carrots, so we have them growing and now it's time to harvest. So we've got our cosmic purple carrot here. You can see they have a nice dark uh, vegetative growth on the outside, but then on the inside, it's still your traditional orange color. This would be a nice addition to any veggie plate and also a fun one for the kids to try. So now it's also time to harvest our peas and the two peas that we have here, you can eat them in shell. Um, and I wanted to talk about how to know when to harvest your peas. You can see down here, the ones that we planted with our carrots are a little past um, their ripeness. We have been picking them and harvesting them. The way you can tell is you can see how thick uh, that pod is. It's very well developed. You can squeeze it and it's nice and firm. At this point, these are going to be uh, beyond their tenderness and they're not going to be quite as sweet as they would have if you had harvested them earlier in the season. So this is a little bit past um, here we've got a plant, a pea plant, and you can see that these are starting to develop nicely. If you look at them, you can see the peas developing. Um, they are obviously narrower than the ones that were overripe. And at this point, you can eat them. Um, might just pick off the ends a little bit. This here is underripe. You can see it's much shorter and smaller. It's very thin, it's papery thin. So we can get a lot more vegetative growth on this one. So we're gonna leave this one on our vine. So you're looking for something kind of right in the middle. Um, it's gonna have a nice snap to it, um, a nice tender peas in there. You can of course eat peas fresh out of the garden or you can take them in and saute them. Um, but whichever way you choose to eat them, it's always best to eat them right away after you harvest them rather than to wait a while. What I love best about peas and carrots is they're an easy vegetable and one of kids' favorites to grow and to eat. There's also other ways of incorporating peas and carrots into your children's activities. And one of those ways is to get books. Um, there's several books about uh, peas and carrots. In this case, it's a book called Carrots and Pea, um, An Unlikely Friendship. A lot of the peas and carrot books are about diversity and appreciating the differences between people. The great thing about carrots and peas is not only can you incorporate it into your garden, but you can also incorporate it into story time. Gardening and story time go together like peas and carrots.
farmer's market is a great place to go. Now, if you're a, a producer, you grow your own food, uh, you may think that this isn't what I need to do. However, keep in mind that you may have a crop failure, you may have things that aren't quite ready, or yours may be past season and you still want to eat them. You may want to teach your kids more about gardening. There's lots of reasons to go, even if you have your own vegetable garden. So let's talk about a few of the things you need to know before you go that'll make your trip to the market a little better. First of all, come prepared. Often a bag of some sort is very useful. Very often the, the farmers will have bags for you to put your produce in, but one of the reasons that we use markets is because we want to become more green. And using a recyclable bag is one way to do that. Also, bring small bills. Nothing worse than uh, for the producer or uh, the farmer than to have you give them a $20 bill or a $50 bill. They're giving you all their change. So come with small bills so you can go through the vendors without having to stop for a lot of change. Be flexible. It's really tough to go to the market and expect to find all the produce from all of the seasons at a farmer's market. You'll find that at a grocery store, but here you're buying local, you're buying things that are regional. So expect to buy what's in season where you are. So rather than come with a recipe in mind, it might be a good idea to come look what's here, buy what looks specifically good that day, and take that home and find the recipe for it. These are all things that can make your trip a little bit better. Once you're at the market, take a few minutes to stroll through. This helps you figure out what is in season, in your area and what you want to buy and also who you may want to buy from. There are variances in vendors. While you're doing that, take a couple of minutes to stop and talk to a couple of the vendors, it's particularly those that you may be interested in purchasing from. That gives you an idea of questions that you may have, such as how did you grow it? When did you harvest it? What do you suggest as far as how do I pick one out or can you help me pick one out? Uh, how about uh, how do I store it when I get it home? And do you have any suggestions for how I may use it when I get there? Remember that you're not at a flea market when you're at a farmer's market. So this isn't really the place where you're going in to get the really good bargain and pinch the pennies. This is the place where you're going for quality food that's produced locally, full of flavor, full of nutrition. A little bit different experience than some other places you may shop. Another difference that you'll find between here and the supermarket is that often in the supermarket things are pre-packaged. You don't get to touch them and feel them and so the temptation when you come here is to, to be very hands-on. But keep in mind produce is usually fairly delicate. Even something that, like a potato that we think of as, as sturdy and strong, uh, you can damage that too. So when you're with the produce, if you're going to be touching it, make sure that you do it with the greatest respect. Don't squeeze, don't push, you can sniff. Uh, and some vendors really aren't going to be that excited uh, about having you handle their produce. In that case, you can lean over and sniff. Last thing I want you to remember is that produce is perishable. So once you buy it, just as if you go to the supermarket, once you've finished at the, at the farmer's market, straight home, store the food correctly in the refrigerator if need, to, need be, otherwise in a cool place. I hope you'll give all these tips a try. For Oklahoma Gardening, I'm Barbara Brown. Many times when we're talking about farmers markets, we're talking with gardeners and horticulturists and today we have a farmer joining us, but he's also a pediatrician. We are here at the Lawton Farmers Market joined by Dr. Legeko. And doctor, can you tell us how this farmers market came to be? Well, uh, back in early 2000, 
we started looking, you get one of those oh my gosh moments, and one of those oh my gosh moments was when we looked at the CDC statistics that the obesity rate in children had tripled. So we put an organization together in town to combat childhood obesity called the Fit Kids of Southwest Oklahoma. And in our strategic planning, one of the things we figured out is, you know, we can't tell people to eat five servings of fruit and vegetable a day if we can't help provide those. Mm -hmm. We had no market. So my background with my family in raising fresh fruits and vegetables was a perfect match for me to work with the OSU Extension Office and development of some farmers and put together an organization to put together the Lawton Farmers Market. So since 2007, we've had a every Saturday market and now we have a Wednesday and Saturday market that, that within the last year now runs year round. And that's and you wanted it to run year round intentionally, right? Yes, our, our goal is a sustainable agriculture. Mm -hmm. And to have sustainable agriculture, you really need more than just Memorial Day to Labor Day because people need to be able to eat local stuff year round. But you can't produce local stuff if you don't have a market. So our goal is to keep a 12 months out of the year market for people to start developing agriculture that will be sustainable year round. And, and you've done a lot of legwork to get this farmer's market off the ground. And, and there's a lot of planning and, and working with business leaders. Can you kind of talk about that a little bit? Well, a, a farmer's market, um, we would think is just putting your stuff out and, and everyone selling stuff, yet it's a, it's, it's a health event, it's a total organization. Um, we need help from attorneys to help us with the legal stuff, the tax commission. Um, all different groups in the city have to be involved. Everyone has to be involved with a farmer's market to make it work, from the city to the health department, not just people who you normally think deal with with food and health, but also businesses, healthy businesses. How can businesses be healthy? So businesses are involved and every part of the city is actually involved. And let's talk a little bit about some of the other ways that you're involved in the community related to the farmer's market with the, the Southwest Fit Kids. Um, talk a little bit about it, please. So Fit Kids is a, if you want to look at, Fit Kids is the hub with lots of different arms mm -hmm. uh, and all these spokes or arms, so to speak, are different functions that are going on within Fit Kids. One example is the uh, trailways, the Fit Trailways uh, at the Wichita Mountains, where we've developed a, a bike and walking trail in the Wichita Mountains. Uh, back to, uh, the, the safe routes to school, uh, developing programs where kids can, can get some exercise before school, which we know and I know as a pediatrician, if kids are active, they're going to do better academically. Mm -hmm. it's, you see, health in kids is not just what we eat. It's, it's, this, it's health behaviors. It's what they eat. It's what they drink. It's, it's do they get exercise. It's do they, do they get proper nutrition. So there's so many things involved. It's not just a farmer's market. Right. And you're also looking at healthy education as well. Y'all are doing a lot with education here in Lawton. I think one of the things we, uh, we meet every month as an organization, our Southwest Growers Association, the one thing we've heard from the public is they want more education. We need classes. We need help. We want to grow stuff, but we just don't know how. So this year, with the help of Cameron University, uh, Department of Agriculture, and Dr. Leon Fisher, have helped us work with developing some educational series on Saturday, which were extremely successful. We had programs like Growing Your Own Tomato Plants, Bees 101, Chickens 101, development of uh, ir drip irrigation. So the public is crying for more information. It's interesting, we're getting so many people who now cook more. We, we went through a generation that really wasn't cooking very much, and now with food channels, people are learning recipes, and they're coming out to the market because they want to buy basic food and, and cook it at home. So 
we're seeing this whole change, I think, but the farmer's market is just one part of it, of the, of the change that we're seeing. And that's what I love about farmer's markets. It's so much about the relationships that you develop in the communities. I mean, as a customer here talking to a farmer, you know, you can find out information about your produce or about how to, how to grow that produce. Farmer's markets are events. They're not just a, we go to the grocery store just to buy groceries. We go to a farmer's market because it's an event not just to buy things that we want to cook, but also to be able to learn from farmers, to talk to farmers. Most people who produce, they're more than happy to give information to people. And we have so many people that, that would just love to, to grow and maybe potential people who will come to our market in the future if we can help them. It's, it's a resource for people. It's, it's a definite resource for people. But uh, my parents always grew up with a thing of, you know, you need to, if you want to eat, you have to raise your food. And so we're, we're trying to help people to get back to that because we seem to have lost a lot of that back in the 1980s. Well, thank you for sharing your information with us and, and we enjoyed being here. Thank you for coming and hope you can uh, get some stuff today and take it back and cook it. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. talk about local foods and all the different avenues in which local foods get to the consumers and today we're here at Provision Kitchens and joining me is Catherine Grant who is the farm manager mm -hmm. and Catherine why does a restaurant have a farm? Well uh, in, in this case the restaurant uh, the owners of the restaurant were passionate about bringing certified organic fresh and local food in a consistent basis um, to you know, put in their food to serve to the public and not just do it here and there. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, and we grow certified organic vegetables. We do pastured eggs and pork. And um, it's all to um, serve the public here in Nichols Hills in Oklahoma City uh, through Provision Kitchen's hot bar, their grab and go and their salad bar. I work with the chef here um, to help them figure out what we can do seasonally for them that they can then incorporate into their menu. So um, we sit down, you know, every quarter and go over what's coming. The food's beautiful in there. I mean, it really is. It, it is. And then there's a convenience kind of a aisle area where you can just get some of your groceries or get some instant meals together. Yeah, go. that's one of the things that really sets Provision Kitchen apart is there is, um, there's the convenience of it. So there's a hot bar where you can come in and sit down. People come in for lunch and dinner and, and enjoy it that way um, or a salad that way. Or you can go to the case and you can get a grab and go meal that you can then warm up at home. Um, and it's the same quality food, it's just prepared in a way that makes it convenient. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's just, you know, competing with other, you know, not so healthy, convenient <laughs> ways to right. eat. Right. And then I think that's one of the biggest obstacles is convenience. I mean, we've all got that's hectic it. schedules and we've got different timelines that we're working with. Right. So right. any time they can stop in and, and get this convenient food. Right. Now, I, I think a lot of times we think of gardening as spring through fall, but you guys are open year-round, so mm -hmm. how do you help supply that those produce throughout the year? Right. Um, well, we use season extension techniques, which I think is essential to farming in Oklahoma anyway. Such um, as season extension techniques so such as? High tunnels, low tunnels, mini tunnels, okay. um, row covers, anything that we can do to kind of buffer the crops mm -hmm. from the weather, um, whether it's shade in the summer and um, or you know protection in the in the winter time, so we can grow kale you know and salad greens all through the winter, and then we can use our hoops and put our tomatoes up and we can put shade cloth so that we can deal with the heat here, right. and still still have a Mediterranean climate inside the hoop, some sort of. Just, just taking off those climaxes of winter. And right, summer a it, bit. it it takes the edge off so the plants can survive here, <laughs> um, and yeah, and it makes it so that we can grow year round. Very nice. And so what about the produce that maybe doesn't get used? I mean, I'm sure most of it is purchased or yeah. used in the kitchen, but well, do you have um, any waste? Yeah, my job is to find avenues for that food. So if we grow, you know, extra, we sell it through um, the, through here. Um, and then I'll sell to other local restaurants um, when uh, when I have extra. Okay. So, yeah. Right. Is there any that ever just goes bad and it's no longer able to 
be sold and what do you do with that? Um, well, we have, you know, livestock on the farm, so there's that and then we compost everything. And then um, another fun thing we do is we take the waste from the kitchen um, and we compost it at the farm. Oh. So we create a closed loop So the here. kitchen's given back to the farm as yep. well. Yep, yep. Very nice. And where can people find out more information about Provision Kitchen? Yeah, uh, we have a website. Thank so. you for sharing your story with us. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. talk about local foods one of the things we wanted to highlight is the clients that are buying these local foods we're all dealing with hectic schedules and sometimes you know whether it's a farmers market or co-op certain schedules that they have don't fit with our lifestyles so joining us is Christina and her daughter Emma and you guys are clients here can you tell us why that's important for you I love the freshness of it and the convenience to work that I can pick it up anytime on most of the afternoons on Fridays and we send in an order sometime during the week whenever I get around to getting back to a cat about um, what we want and just love that it's fresh and local and um, organic so I feel good about feeding it to my family. So while we're here at Provision Kitchens which is also a restaurant you guys are picking up your groceries as well. We are, yes. And they have some other uh, instant meals that you can take as well. <laughs> have you participated in that? We have. They, we, there's a couple things in there that we've tried. Salmon's one of our favorites, but it's just super convenient to take home and warm up and have a, a nice dinner for, for everybody um, on a busy, busy night. And what do you think about the quality and the flavor? It's fantastic. Get? It's perfect. It's healthy and just delicious. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. Joining us are Kim and Stephanie, who also enjoy the food here at Provision Kitchen. And you guys enjoy buying the stuff here at the kitchen as well. Can you tell us what some of your favorite things are that you get? Well, I just like the variety that is available through some of the farmers that deliver their products here to the city. Um, I can grow some things in my backyard, but I don't have enough room to grow everything that I'd like to. So it certainly supplements what I'm trying to do at home already. And what about you, Stephanie? Sure, I've tried a handful of the things, and my favorite is the chicken teriyaki bowl. And I've tried a handful of things, and I always end up going back to that one. But I also love the little chicken bites for my kids. And there's a lot of good stuff I like here. And you both are gardeners, but maybe you don't harvest your own chickens. So that's, <laughs> that's kind correct. of the nice thing about getting this. Absolutely. Why is buying local food important to you? It's important both to support the local economy and our friends who are uh, farmers and gardeners here uh, that try to do that for a living. It's also important to vote with your dollars and I think that it's very important that we have organic non-GMO food available and so I want to support the people who bring it to us. Excellent. Absolutely. I completely agree. I mean, there, it's totally different to buy food from a big chain grocery store where you don't know how long it's been since, for example, the egg was hatched to get to your refrigerator. and. To come here and know that it was, you know, significantly less time and same thing for the vegetables that the asparagus is picked this morning and then you get to come and pick it up in the store. I mean, that's just not something you can get anywhere else. I think that's, I mean, not as readily available other places. So. And, and why did you choose to go through Provision Kitchen versus, you know, some of the CSAs and co-ops? What was it about the convenience of it or was there... For me, it's convenience. I, I come here and get lunch sometimes and take it back to the office and this is a great way to pick up some groceries while I'm getting my lunch, get everything done at the same time. For me, I chose it because I know the farmer. <laughs> and to me, knowing the farmer is very important. Uh, to know how they raise their food is important to me as well. Thank you. Thank you. There are lots of great horticultural events this time of year. Be sure and consider these activities when you're making your plans for the weeks ahead.
Next week, Casey shops for shade plants with gardening guy Paul James. We stop by the Tulsa Botanic Garden. In Stillwater, we visit a yard that has gone wild, and Barbara Brown will prepare a tasty treat. We hope you join us then for more TV You'll Grow to Love. To find out more information about show topics, as well as recipes, videos, articles, fact sheets, and other resources, including a directory of local extension offices, be sure and visit our website, oklamagardening.okstate.edu. And we always have great information, answers to questions, photos, and gardening discussions on your favorite social media as well. Join in on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can find this entire show and other recent shows, as well as individual segments on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And tune in to our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel to watch segments from previous hosts. Oklahoma Gardening is produced by the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service as part of the Division of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources at Oklahoma State University. The Botanic Garden at OSU is home to our studio gardens, and we encourage you to come visit this beautiful Stillwater Jewel. We wish to thank our generous underwriters, Southwood Landscape and Garden Center, and the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry. Additional support is provided by Pond Pro Shops, Greenleaf Nursery and the Garden Debut Plants, and the Oklahoma Horticultural Society.